Hey, hello and welcome back to the channel this week. This week's episode is all about this little lens right here. The 23 1.4 LMWR, the new 23 millimeter f1.4. And I have to say that Fuji was very nice and let me borrow this particular lens. And I also borrowed the X-Pro3 with it because I wanted to see what this lens was like on that particular camera because I did borrow that same setup with the old 23 1.4 and I really liked it. The problem still was that using the frame lines, it still got in the way. And I still prefer to use the X-Pro3, which I don't have. I'm gonna see if I can get this thing on the camera again. There we go. This is how I prefer to use the X-Pro3 with the 23 F2. The reason is because I can use the frame lines easier um, it doesn't infringe as much on it. Now you got this lens hood here where you can see through it. So it tends to work very much better. So anyway, let's get to this uh, rather late review of this particular lens. This is actually a, uh, a user review. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go through some of the photographs that I've taken with it. Um, more specifically, the other morning that I went out with it, I really got some, well, I, what I think is some nice photographs, uh, just, you know, maritime type stuff. And <clears throat> it uh, it's different from the older lens in that it does not, and I've said this before, it, there's not as much character to it. Um, you can give some character back to it with um, some film simulation modes, uh, some adjustments that way, which will, in JPEG form will give it some, some feel. Uh, it's extremely sharp. It's a very sharp lens and wide open. It's just beautiful. The, the background rendition is just gorgeous. Um, and I'm not, uh, I, I, th I think I'm still lean towards the older one. And I don't know why that is. Maybe it's cause I like the clutch for manual focusing, but um, like I said, it's got some more character to it. So. Let's let's look at some of the images and I'll compare. I can't really compare the two of them together because I didn't have both lenses at the same time. Um, I don't own the old 2314, although I would like to. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about how it felt to use the the lens, uh, the lenses. I, I you know the other thing is I didn't get to use this lens with. Um, uh, any documentary tile style photography, which is a shame, but I did get to use this lens with my X-T5. So the file sizes are beautiful, big and, and gorgeous. And that lens really works well with that 40 megapixel sensor. So I'm hoping I'm probably going to be disappointed, but um, I'm hoping that the X-Pro4 will have that 40 megapixel sensor and maybe some other things I don't know. But anyway, I digress. So let's uh, let's look at some photographs and um, I'll give you my opinions along the way as to what it was like using this lens and what the results were like. So here we go. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these images I've taken over the past couple of weeks. This first shot here of these uh, rocking chairs sitting out on a deck is it F4? And I love the way the background looks. I just love the whole look of this image. This next image here of this anvil, I really wanted to separate the background from this old anvil with all these marks on it. it just the background is awesome. And it was taken at 1.4, which you can tell the background is nicely, softly out of focus. Now this next image here of this anchor and net is also at 1.4. I love the way it just slowly goes out of focus. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now this image here is also at 1.4 and I really struggled with this because um, I wanted more of this Orlock to be in focus. And uh, so after further thought, <laughs> after I'd already taken it, of course, and at home, I thought about shooting it at F4. So I may go back and do that again. This shot here, I absolutely love this. I don't know what it is about it. 
It was shot at 1.4. Um, it's nothing special, just a ring and a buoy. But for some reason, I just love the the film simulation recipe that I used. I love everything about it. I love the way the background looks. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I this is a great image for me. Now, this image here really shows the characteristics of this lens. Shot a 5.6, the amazing detail in the where the light is hitting the wood grain. I just love the way this looks that way. And the film sim recipe I use, I really enjoy the way it looks. It's just exquisite. This image was also shot at 5.6, and I just love the lacing of the leather going up and the juxtaposition of all the line and rope. Now with this shot just a little bit further away, shows a lot of detail in the shadows and everything. This lens really performed well at 5.6. Uh, I just wanted to have, make sure that all of, everything was in focus. Now with this shot here, I really wanted to separate this background from this wrought iron chair. And I did that by shooting at 5.6 and getting a little bit close. This shot of this bow, uh, really liked it in color, but it when I looked at it later on, I didn't really like the way it showed the detail in the paint as it was, you know, kind of getting worn and chipping away. So I decided to convert it to black and white and uh, use the raw version and put it in through um, Silver Effects Pro 2. Okay, so let's look at some examples from the older lens, the 23 1.4R. Now this lens had a great photojournalistic look to it. Uh, this shot is at 1.4 and I had a great time using this lens and it just gives me that feeling that I wanted. This shot was made at f8 and I was a little disappointed that it didn't carry all the way to the end of the wall but I just love the look of it. The window, the buoy, everything and the buoy is really critically sharp. Now this shot I tried at 1.4, didn't like it, so I changed it to 5.0. And I like it much better because there's more depth of field to it and it really shows you the character of those two really beat up rescue rings. Now this shot at our local coffee shop, I just like the way the sunlight was beaming in the window with these two stools and I made it at 5.6. You know, the this lens, at 5.6 is great. I mean, I, I don't know why, but I gravitated towards that um, that aperture for some reason. For the most part, it the depth of field carried all the way through both boats here. And I really like the way it looks. This lens just for this type of work in black and white, I love it. This shot here was made at uh, F5. And I just love the way the shadow is making this, you know, this triangle shape here. And I love the way the background looks. It is outstanding. You can just make out this this uh, schooner in the background. It's it's great for me. And I just love the way the lens rendered everything. So let's go over some basics of this new 23 millimeter f1.4 lens. Now the filter thread on this is a 58, which is a lot smaller than the other one is, and it's longer. It's longer this way. The other one was a little bit fatter. Um, the length is kind of what bothers me here because it gets in the way of the frame lines, plain and simple. But it does feel lighter. And on this X-Pro3, it really feels nice. I mean, it's, it fits nice in the hand. And also, it feels great on my X-T5. So my suggestion you don't pay much attention to my suggestions anyway. But anyway, um, the new lens on the X-T5, top notch. I think it's, it's, it, it's a great purchase if you're thinking about that. And to be honest with you, that lens, for as good as it is, uh, it's not that much money comparatively new. It's like $899 or something. So it's under $1,000. Compare that with Canon and Sony and, and uh, Nikon. My goodness gracious, for a lens that, of that quality, for 900 bucks, you're not gonna see that with those other guys. So, that's my suggestion here is, don't put it on an X-Pro, put it on an X-T5. Now, you can use the X-T, the X-Pro5 with this lens without using the frame lines, and you'll have no problem at all. It's just like using it with the X-T5. Um, 
just missing a few things. But you can use it that way and it's fine. I just like to use the frame line. So for me, it's a little bit too long. I like the fact that it's, it's skinnier, but it's too long. That's it for this week. And remember, uh, check out capeandphototours.com. We've, we've just started up our tours for this year, or I should say for this season. Uh, we go into October. And um, we've got another one, we've got, got one coming up uh, here, the uh, beginning of June, but many times available. Anyway, that's it for this week. And remember, it's not what you photograph, it's how you photograph it. And we'll catch you next time.